Welcome back to Juro3 YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, we're having a look over an EV, or say, should say, an imitator EV uh, 780 uh, that I have been uh, rebuilding, refurbishing, and upgrading. Um, this originally was an EV 700, and uh, when I got it, there uh, was motors burned out, so I have actually upgraded this to a DC um, rotator and I've got a controller that I'll show you later on um, and yeah I just is just basically I've done all the mods I've just done a dry assembly to make sure everything's okay and this is going to be the de-assembly so then I can actually physically um, get it all greased up put all the bearings in and reassemble the whole thing so this is just a, a de-assembly of the dry um, assembly in a sense so basically we'll pop the um, pot upside down because that's how best to do it We'll pop the bottom off. So this is the bottom housing. Again, this was all uh, glass bead blasted on the outside and etch primed and painted. So basically, we have the uh, the axle, the hollow axle. This axle, um, there was two versions of the EV700. Um, this one is the all steel um, gear version. Um, so in, in the axle, so this one uh, again, glass bit blasting inside, um, etch primed and painted again. As you can see, this axle goes all the way. This um, gear goes all the way around. In the other one, it was a complete mold. It was only half of the gear, all in aluminium. So there's that one. So now we're just going to do the uh, go down through the disassembly process. Make sure I'm going to take out the. Um, I've replaced the actual um, the, the six pin flat terminal Jones plug with a, um, a LTW round plate uh, round round plug which is on a three mil stainless steel um, mounting plate. So there's that one. Now to get this the whole assembly out, we've got to actually remove the limit switch assembly because everything's a bit of a tight fit in here. So I had to figure out ways of um, doing all these mods and upgrades. Um, yeah, so this the motor in this one is actually out of a imitator 1200. So it's the uh, bigger motor, and because uh, what's normally in the EV 800 um, was only the motor that was in a 747. So basically, we get that out of the road there, the actual limit switch assembly. And we're spinning back around over here. I've only got, whoops, I've only got one set of the bolts in here just for this dry assembly. So I just want to get these all out, loosen these off. I'm going to hold everything up, get a bit of pressure off everything. That was a real shoehorn to get this whole thing in here. There's just a gear, this gearbox in this one has one extra gear in the drivetrain. I've only ever seen the other version which had uh, one less gear in the drivetrain so everything is bigger and of course then I wanted to put a DC motor in there which is a lot longer so it's a shoehorn to get in and out so we've got to lift him up up past one point we're then I drop the back of it down to get it out there we go once we get it up we push the plate through the hole. Again that hole was, um, we'll just put this gear assembly aside for now. What I've done is I've cut the hole out bigger to allow the actual plate and everything to go through. And so there's your top housing. And uh, yeah, there we go, so there's that. Put these bolts aside. So what I'm going to do now is I've just got to disassemble the front half of this, oh, sorry the back half I should say, so I can physically I'm not going to take the motor off because I've already set the motor in the in the spacings and everything. So I'm just going to remove the back of this so I can actually get it disassembled. So okay, well, by the one here, this is the um, the motor that go that's in this one. This is the um, I can't remember the number of it. So the one from a 1200. Uh, it's on a the mounting plate that came with this this mounting plate here, and I've just adapted this other one to fit in fit in pretty easily. Um, uh, but it's this is so much longer um, that actually it just basically is only about one or two mil off the backing plate. That's why you've got to sort of juggle it to get it in. 
So I've done a few um, mods to get this um, to this stage. So we'll um, stim up this way, make sure we don't damage the the pot. So I've had to do a, a lot of mods on this because when I got it, there was no potentiometer. Well, there was someone's idea of using a uh, wires wrapped around the axle to work the potentiometer, and they had a multi-turn potentiometer on there. And it was it was a, mod a modification that was done, and I'm, you know, I don't know who did it, but uh, they changed everything around, and it was a big mess, as well as the AC motor being um, stuffed. Um, and I didn't have any, so that's when I went about, especially when I found out this one had an extra gear in the drivetrain, because I bought two of these. That's how I knew how the difference between the two. So the other one, which has already been sold in a previous video, uh, it only has um, it has one less gear on the drivetrain and it had aluminium casing. So um, aluminium gear on, on the aluminium, I'll get it right. Aluminium gear. I'll just get this apart if I can. Whoa! We might do a bit of levering, which I don't really want to do. And I didn't bring my flat blade screwdriver over. Damn. So this one has um, an extra gear in the drivetrain. So let's see if I can just get in here without killing myself. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see if I can just push this apart. Oh, this is really tight to get to get apart. This is going well. Not. Ah, jeez. It's not even bolted and it's tight. Far out. I think it's so far away, I think we should get the other one. <clears throat> okay, uh, off to a good start now. Oh, there's a bit of a gap here. Let's see if we can get down in here. There we go. We're ready for that. One, one side's popped off. They are a very tight fit, these, these little um, mounting posts. And, oh, why not? I should have done first. <laughs> I know well it's not coming apart because I've had to do the mods to, the sh to these shafts. Um, can I get in behind there? No, I can't. I knew what I had to do first. That's why it's not coming apart. Put it back together again. Jeez, I don't know how to put this thing together. Got to get these little C clips out first. The shafts in this one was actually a bit longer, and they hung out a long way. So I've actually cut them back and regrooved the actual um, and regrooved the actual physical shaft. Now this should come apart now. There was last word. There we go. Okay. So what we we'll do is we we'll just lay this back. So don't lose that. So basically, as you can see, there is one, two, three, four, five, six gears in this one where the EV700, the other one I had, the AC one, only has five gears in the drivetrain. So yeah, which meant what they've done is they've made up these little collars just here. We just see them to space this out more. Um, so yeah, but I had no potentiometer in this one. I need the multi-turn one and the gear, this gear was here, but I had to use a Yasu gear and and grind out a bit more to fit to physically get this to fit and work. So there, there's that. So and I've modded the oh, come back over here. I've modded the limit that this was all a whole lot of framework for how they did this really weird potentiometer. The potentiometer was sitting on the side here, somehow it's just like weird. You probably said it in the previous video, so 
I put the uh, diodes, the return diodes uh, from the limit switches on. So I'm going to uh, disassemble all this and then I'll, um, I'll stop the video and then I shall get everything greased back up again, get it reassembled as a time restraints and everything. And this video will probably want to, this camera will put up the camera will probably want to die on me most likely so we'll get him all apart the gears have got a little bit of surface rust on them but I'll probably give them a bit of a, a polish up before um, reassembly so that'd be one thing I'll be doing and I'll put shims in here to shim everything up right the actual um, the BK spring in this one is out of a Yesu as well because I need to get everything down back as far as I can and I'm using my brand spanking new um, uh, pinion gear uh, which is a short version which I use for my um, 1280s uh, um, upgrades that I do um, so yeah so this is um, a bit of an upgrade so basically we shall probably stop it there um, and um, I shall then get it greased up, I'll get these gears all polished up a bit here and then I will get it all re partly reassembled um, in the gears and everything so and then we can actually move forward and you know, get this thing up and running again catch her in the next um, stage or the next video welcome back part two of the reassembly of the imitator EV 780 okay I have got this all back together again, all greased up with um, uh, Inox um, MX6 grease. Um, it's been tightened up. I've Loctited all the screws, um, and basically now it's ready to physically shoehorn back into the. Uh, oops, get this around the right bloody way would be a good idea. Around that way. Got to get that through the hole first. So we've got to feed through the actual the plate. I'll spin around see how it's still undone. So we'll get this plate through the hole. And back out again. Like that. Put the drop it down inside. to the bottom and then we're going to lift it up to get it straight to then drop it straight down there we go it went together okay now make sure that no wires in the wrong spot righty okay right so now what I'll probably do is I'll put these bolts in and then I'll put a little ever small amount of silicon on these because they are a hole technically speaking so I'll put the first one in and then I'll put the other ones in, then I'll put a little bit of silicon on the base of it just to help seal it a bit maybe let's put that in a little way, put this one here in to locate and then I'll just got a little bit of silicon to put on the other ones bring it down didn't I so we just put a little bit of silicon on the um, on the surface ah, I've got silicon everywhere on me damn uh -huh. put a little bit around it just put a little bit around the thread there up a little bit, get this bolt to start, yeah. let's go get the other one done as well, small a bit, small, small a bit, that's good English, a small amount, We'll just 
second door. Make sure I'll just screw it around here. We'll get this in here. We're going to lift it up ever so slightly. There's a little bit of play in these bolts. So, um, you know, what testing I did, I'm going to make sure it's all the way up to make good meshing with the, um, the actual gear. So, make sure it's all the way up. Might nip these up. Not all the way for now, just so I can get the other ones in. Just snip it up a little bit. Okay, let's get these other ones back out. Put any bit of little silicon on here. Run a little bit around the thread. Right at the top, I'm not putting this into the, uh, the thread further down. I don't want it going getting onto the, the threaded section that's going into the plate over here. So that's threaded into this big plate there. So I don't want to be put too much into there. Just enough to try and seal this up a little bit. Nip this one up. Since it is a potential hole to the inside. Nip that up from out. Remove this one. Do likewise. And the surface is a bit rough, so probably pays to put a bit of, bit of silicon here just to make sure I'm not going to get any moisture in. Around here again. And the silicon decides to come out, and then it goes all over the countryside. Bloody hell. Okay. Right, we'll get rid of this. Just looking out of the road for now. Hardy, hardy. Now we can do these all the way up now. get there in front of the camera so that's what I'm doing alright howdy okay so what we'll do now is we'll I'll put this uh, cover plate back on again Get it down the road, sort of from moving around. The gasket's already on there, I glued that on so it would be uh, easier for installation. You had these cover plates, these, um, these three more cover plates made up for the, um, the 747, but it also fits, fits this as well. So, when you have someone that does laser cutting close to you, it was all laser cut. It saves me stuffing around with it. Silicon on me. Okay. Righty outie. Let's get all these wires down out of the road. And I really probably, oh, what I might do is I might just put a little bit of Loctite on these. <coughs> I use this Loctite, 
which is called three bonds. This is the red one. Just going to put a <coughs> oh, there we go. Just going to put a little bit on here. This is what holds the um, the limit switches on. The limit switch assembly, I should say. Get it right. Get through the hole. This is the only way I tried to put this limit switches on and try to, to get it in into the whole thing assembly in, but the whole motor assembly in one go with this attached and everything I tried you couldn't do it. So I had to uh, say okay I've got to do it another way. And you can actually get to it through the opening of the bearing thing here. So so hence that's why it's getting done this way. On the other one, everything being slightly shorter this way, and the motor, the AC motor was a lot shorter, it could just drop straight in, so I didn't have that issue. Now everything's shorter, um, but now when you put a big a big motor in, big DC motor in which is longer. And then the whole, you've got an extra gear in the drivetrain. There we are, we're actually in there. So I guess I'll make sure all these wires sit down out of the road. Because this knock block here comes around. And we don't want that grabbing hold of any of those wires. So that's all good. So, alrighty. Alright, I might stop it there for a second because I've got to physically just check everything. And then I shall come back and I shall be dropping the, um, whoops, yep, back on there, put the um, axle and everything in um, and I'll get the, everything, the bearing tracks here greased up and get this all ready to go back together again. So yeah, so I'll catch you in part three. Right. Welcome back to part three of the EV780 uh, uh, rebuild. Okay, I have greased all the tracks and I've installed the, um, in this case the top set of bearings um, both sides so I can actually drop the axle in and I've also greased the axle which is actually I've always pre-greased the axle pre-greased the, the gear, I didn't need to do all the gear but I did it all anyway, but whatever so it's all, all done so basically now we get ourselves square to be flat at the end. That's where it's sitting. Okay. Okie dokie. Alrighty. Alrighty. Now. Which would be the best way to do this? Okay. Load up the bearings. And here, that's why I've got a bit of extra grease on here, just to hold the bearings. Smooth, don't vibrate it. Just so you know, there's 48 bearings in the EV700 series right down there then okay, if you want to go there so that's where it's going to go uh, these are um, 9.5 or 9.52 or 38 bearings I'll pick it up be good to get this one done it's been quite a while oh that'll be about right straight down inside. Right. Okay, back again after dropping the bearing down inside I had to go and grab a, um, a magnetic screwdriver to get it back out again. I've got it here now, so I'm ready for it. And I probably won't drop another one now. Half of the cores. So as I was saying, the, these have 
9.5 bearings and there's 48 of them. Get this all loaded up. Get a bit, bit sparing on the grease this side, so I'll start from the bottom. Don't fall down. I might just um, add just a little bit more grease there because it's a bit on the uh, light side. Outsides of these, just so we've not got a bit there already. I've got already done on the other another half, but I'll just get a bit extra in here. Now the bearings are in. So what I have to do now is I will, after I finish this, I shall. Um, then silicon all around the edge here, so I'll probably stop the video and then I'll get that all done because I don't want to get bloody silicon all over my bloody camera's buttons when I'm trying to stop it and start it. So I'll get that pre siliconed before I physically assemble the actual axle into, into position. So I'll be up to part four. Or whatever part we're up to, I've lost track. Okay, I think I've applied enough grease on here. Okay, we shall catch you in the next stage or next section. Okay, we're back. Righty, Addy. Let's. Uh, I've already siliconed both sides of the track here. We shall uh, turn this around. This is the bottom housing, and it's going to go on. Wrong way, you idiot. Wrong way. That way. I wasn't watching what I was doing. Okay. There we go. What the idea? Get all these bolts started. Tight side, just loosely at the present moment. Try to get everything located. Around. Oh, yeah. Getting there. Do a bit of a alignment of the casing. There we go. Push it back into some position. There we go. Probably should get my Got to bring it over, so let's I'll do the rest up by hand. And there it does, let's talk it pretty good. Right out. Yep. Alrighty, alrighty. Now, two 10mm spanners, which I did bring over. There they are. Let's uh, get 
these all done. Then we're going to clean off the excess silicon. And then I can go and test this thing. Oh, that's right. Can't get the spanner on there properly, that one. Now, plate in the road. Use the open end on these ones. The side mount bracket piece, this piece here, is in the road. So the old open end spinner is the only way to go. There it is, nearly there. Righty -oddy. Okay. Clean up the outside. And uh, we should do that in a second. So we can now turn him over. And we have it. One EV780. I'll label this and everything in a minute. But I'm going to clean all this excess silicon off. And then I'm going to take it over and do a run through. And I'll be back showing you what I've done with the controller um, with the new PCB and everything so all good okay we shall catch you shortly right. okay welcome back it is still together this is a uh, the, the last stage of the EV um, 780 DC it's all together operational I've got all the labeling done I've got the clamps on and I'm using my new stainless steel clamps these are the uh, three mil ones that I have um, the M8 bolt U bolts that were with this thing and since this is going to be uh, side mounted I've actually installed the 8 mil stainless steel bolts into the casing and locked tight of them and locked nut of them and again it's using the uh, the new stainless steel clamps um, for this one as well, as well as the bottom one, as you can see. A bit too heavy just to pick up. So she's all, all going, all tested. I've labelled it down the bottom there. You can probably see that. It's been tested. So I thought I'd quickly show you that, and we'll do a bit of a run through in a minute. Okay, I want to show you what I've done to the controller. The controller is this one here and EV780R, uh, this being the remote model so my new PCB in here, I'll show you that in a second we've got the remote port on the back uh, IEC socket, uh, I've shortened down the uh, meter adjustment and I'll put in a cinch socket in here instead of the uh, the Jones plug because Jones plugs are getting really hard to get a hold of so we've got a 6 pin in there we have LED illumination top and bottom I've got a um, I've got a diffuser in here uh, that only shows the center of this and the elevation and blacks out when, this, when it's illuminated and it blacks out all the rest of it and you only see the elevation part in here. So I thought I'd quickly show you this. My new, um, my new posts, um, these have been uh, laser centered 3D printed posts that I got made because you can't get these anymore. Uh, and I decided to put cable tie around this to keep it all together to try and keep this tight keep the board tight and you might see the little rubber foot here this just in case it the side pushes on I don't want it shorting out any casings since I put the cable tie on it's a bit tighter it's not flopping around as much now so so as you note the needle is quite short because it's only doing the inside I'll show you this piece the new PCB this is the new PCB um, it is a um, DS7R 
So it's a hybrid um, from uh, the board that used to be in the 747 and we've modified it, um, took the transistors off, we've installed relays um, and this one has the power supply for the, um, the DC so your, DC, your, your AC comes in and it goes through in a capacitor bridge rectifier and out the other side comes the uh, regulated DC I we'll have the, uh, the RF filter chokes on here and with this board um, the way you configure it in the links there's a little link just here and there's another link just there it tells you that and you either remove, you remove the capacitor and you can move the bridge rectifier put the link in here and it will become an AC version so this is the DC version I also have the um, power supply, the DC DC converter for the uh, LEDs on board. Uh, and so this was all redesigned and by a company that does my PCBs. And uh, we had to do a few little minor mods after the fact, but uh, that's okay. That's going to be put on the later next one, the next version. So that's what the board looks like. RS232 out and uh, remote. And there's no main power, no main current going through the direction switch because it uses the, uh, the same way that the 747 did. It uses the, the, the 5 volts supplier that is um, for the RS232. So in, instead of it switching um, and then playing around with that, they've actually just, just the original one was just broken into the line of the RS232 and um, bang, it was easy, easy done. So uh, but yeah, this it's a, the board's come out really well, so uh, it's working really, really well. So so I don't have to have any bridge rectifiers hanging around everywhere like in the other 747. You have to have something bolted to the deck. Now it's just sitting here. It's an inline one. We've got a capacitor there, um, and yeah, it's we don't need to stuff around like that. And uh, yeah, so it's all good. And there was also a few mods and upgrades done to the actual original design, but uh, at all intents and purposes. It was the original design that we uh, modified. So there we go. That is the new DS-7R PCB for remote remoting of any um, uh, imitator rotator. We can actually put this into well, the standard ones for only for the standard ones. So we can put this in any standard one, replace the original one that goes in, and we can make it into remote. There we go. Oh, without further ado, I think we might just uh, put this on and get it going. What do you reckon? That sounds like a good idea. So we plug him in. I've left everything off here so I actually can visually see what's going on. So plug in my test leads. Plug him into that. You probably won't see the actual display light up, but we'll give it a go. I don't want to get too close to that. Let's see, I might try and move that back a bit. No, I can't do that. Let's just put on a bit on the side. Let's be a bit fancy. There we go. We can see what we're doing now. So, okay, let's turn it on. Well, you can actually just see it. Just see the. Yeah, I'll put the hand over the top. There you go. So the rest blacks out, and you're only left with the elevation part only. So, there we go. Okay, let's take it for a drive around to the left. It does in about 95 seconds in rotation time, this one. So, it's very slow, lots of torque. So there she goes. So you can't see the whole thing spinning around. Let's move over a bit further. Let's just see the whole thing moving. Didn't set that up. Didn't set that up very well, did I? Oh well, too bad. So we have it. It just goes over the 180 either way. Um, so slightly more than, slightly less than vertical when it comes around. I'll swing this around to show you. Or I might do the might swing it around now. Like this. Get away from there. The limit switches will take over. So there's our zero degrees, and then basically we have that much over. So about five degrees or something like that thereabouts. Uh, and the limit switches take over. And then we go back the other way. So this, this has already been basically pre-sold um, in a sense. So this one is going to a new customer. So there we go. So 
the, um, the DC motor in this runs it's fairly fast, but um, this, this design, this particular rotator with the AC motor, it would have been really, really slow because AC motors uh, and they don't spin anywhere near as fast as the DC. Here we come back up to 60 degrees. So, yeah, with a, all the new gearing and everything in here. Um, and this is, you know, 95 seconds is a, is a reasonable thing for bigger aerials. You know, I've been jumping around too much. So there we are, back to 90 degrees. And if you're timing this, you'll see that it's going to be about 95 seconds. 180 degrees, I mean, plus a little bit extra for the extra rotation we go. So it's slow as a wet week, but, you know, it's something you don't want to be spinning around too fast, especially the bigger aerials. I think this bike's going to be using some 6 meter stuff on this. So, it's going to be out there. Uh, I think they're going to be horizontally polarised if I'm going to crack them. Eventually I want to go aside. He wants to put a pipe shape through and he's going to put bearings on the actual shafts here out the side and he's going to guide off to keep the, um, the bend out of the, sh uh, the, sh the, uh, the cross boom. Novel idea. But we can do that because we've got, we can put the pipe shape through. So here we come up to 180 degrees. On this side it goes about 2-3 degrees over before the wind switches take over. There we go. There we go. And of course we can lift and lock. We can actually just go momentary as well. I just lift it and lock. You can't see me doing that, can you? There we go. So you can just go on manual. Well, with manual operation or just whatever. Or you can actually lift and lock. That's what I was doing. I didn't, didn't say that. But that's just got the point. So we'll go back up to north again. Start going around and around. And uh, we might just spin it around this way. And start working in that direction. Touch the PCB. And then we'll stop it at, I'll set it back at zero degrees. At the start point. There we go, coming up to zero. There we go. Zero degrees. So what I might do is I might move this to the side and lift this up so you can physically see and it blocks out the display what it looks like when you get really close to it. Uh, bit of light there. So there are early days behind that. Money eight. Okay, Dave, that's all good. We shall catch you next um, rebuild or upgrade or whatever I get to do next. Bye.